I mean, I'm sure we all, all of us have this whole aspect of not being good enough, but I think the drive, if it was, if it was, if, if it was the not good enough thing, there'd be a lot of psychological issues with that, at least in my opinion. But it was always, we chose to have bigger goals, yeah. to chase bigger things, not because we wanted to prove ourselves yeah. to anybody, we wanted to prove ourselves to us, and we also wanted to in figure out how the hell to enjoy the process yeah. Yeah. In, in the meantime, right? So, uh, See, I, I mean, I, I, we yeah. were just tireless. We I were tireless. Yeah, I tireless. I feel like the difference between today and then for me was like, I enjoy the, like, I enjoy the journey now, you know? And I feel like what, you and I had an amazing time together, but it, like in, enjoying the journey of like hitting the goal for me was not like, I, I felt like suffered with that, you know? I felt like struggled with that. I felt like, man, am I ever gonna feel fully confident, you know? Because all that, the whole business world was so new to you at that yeah. time. I mean, you were like a rookie in the purest sense of the like, word. I was a 12 year old. You didn't know anything about business. Not me. You didn't know anything about insurance. Yeah. You didn't know anything about finance. So I think when you look at yourself today, you're much more worldly. Yeah. Still have the same drive, but back then, I think part of the struggle was we were trying to figure out a lot of things, right? Not only, wow, how are we going to build this thing? And then, you know, you make this big goal, and then, well, shit, do you really think we can double it or triple yeah. it or quadruple it? Well, yeah, well, how the hell are we going to do that? All in the process of, well, I got to understand finance and money and leap and moving this and yeah. moving that. It's, it, was, it was a lot, man. Yeah. It was a lot. I mean, the booze and all the all the drinking, you know, like that was the thing. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go meet somebody, I'm gonna find somebody. But I didn't know any other way then. Like, if I if I look back now, my viewpoint on alcohol, I'm like you don't drink anymore, right? Yeah. So like, like, what's your whole? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah, and then maybe longer. Yeah. So, like, what's your perspective on it now? I don't drink anymore either. I, I, uh, I don't miss it one iota. Did why? Yeah, I don't miss it one iota. I hope, I, I wish that I would have had that realization a hell of a lot longer, you know, when I was 21 years old. Alcohol did nothing for me other than put me in a state of mind where, you know, I don't have to apologize for what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. But like now, I don't miss it one Iota. I don't. I don't have any issues. With somebody sitting here having a cocktail, glass, yeah. knock yourself out. Yeah. But, but I think the realization we have now is that you don't need that to have fun. You know, there's much greater purpose and much greater, you know, fulfillment that you have in life because you're secure. You're, you know, you're comfortable. Yeah. You weren't reckless. Yeah. 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 Reckless. yeah. You were reckless. I was super yeah. Reckless. Yeah. You were reckless. Yeah. How did you see his potential? How did I see his potential? Yeah, how did you spot that in? Just because of his drive. Just, I mean, you do little tests with people to see what, you know, what somebody's able to do. Like those little tests where I can just, I'm, I have, if there's one talent gift I have, is the ability to spot and work with people. Like if that's if all I did is identify people and kind of put them in the right place and work with them. I do, I do pretty well in life. But I could just tell how he spoke, how he carried himself, the drive, the opportunity to go and, you know, meet every objective that we had. Um, you know, I think that's, that's the, the drive in people. Plus, it's also important to have somebody who isn't opposed to disrupting himself or herself. Just because I succeeded here, doesn't mean I shouldn't look for a better way to be a better person. What do you think was like for a turning point for you to 
want to leave your life. Well, we weren't happy. We weren't having fun anymore. Yeah. We weren't having, but we didn't have the ability to be creative. To create. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have the ability to create. We didn't have the ability to use our ingenuity to do the things that we had done that were very successful. Um, you started losing trust in people that you respect. And, um, you know, you kind of get to a point where I didn't want to be beholden to people anymore. Yeah. You know, we would have never, had that not happened, we would never be sitting here today. Yeah. You know, we've always had this vision of living here. But if we would have stayed, or even if we would have left and stayed on the East Coast, we would have never, we wouldn't have been here. So there was a time that, that I kind of relate to one of the reasons for leaving. With it being like, is this all there is? Like, I'm not happy enough. Which is very true. Yeah. So there's the other part of it, too, that I don't put into the story. Because it's a little bit more, like, um, detailed. But there was, remember we were going for that huge goal? That 90-day period mm -hmm. when Michael mm -hmm. Ray was there from mm -hmm. Stanford University? Yep. And we were like visualizing every day and playing the YouTube songs. We were having, that was an we amazing experience. There's no question about it. That yeah. was amazing. I found in that experience like all kinds of things were coming out of me. Like it, part of it was like rage, like wanting to break free. Because we'd never done that before. Yeah. Part of it was creativity. Part of it was like, okay, the, all this fear I have around becoming an entrepreneur is starting to come out and like I want to go do this thing. But I remember we ran like hell to meet our goals. We kicked ass. And. I hit every single part to make senior partner. Every single thing, except there was a small piece, this retention goal for of retaining the talent. Do you remember that? I don't remember you that. Don't remember this, dude? Mm -mm. So you walked into the office. We had hit the goal, so we we're so jazzed. We like did more production in like 90 days than we fucking did. Mm -hmm. we hit yeah, well, I remember that period for oh, sure. Right. So when you came back in, we were so excited that we hit the goal. Although the office didn't hit its goal, so it's kind of a little bittersweet. Like, mm -hmm. I hit my goal for my division. So the office didn't hit its goal for all of where we wanted to be. But we were so excited because we went out and did a bunch of business. But when it came back, we were still elated. However, you had the report and you showed me the retention stat. And I missed my retention goal of retaining my team mm -hmm. by like a small, small percentage. And that was actually the reason why I wasn't gonna get approved for senior partner. Part of me was at like a loss, like, oh, that was a fail from the sense of we didn't meet it and there's no way I could continue on. Like, I, I couldn't go back and go through that again to hit a goal that I wasn't really passionate about. So part of it, I was so jazzed that we did what we did. The other part of it was like, I was like a, a little bit of a fail, like, man, I missed that and there's no way I can go back to rebuilding. I just can't do it. So I think that was like the tipping point for being like, okay, I'm like fully gonna like get over wow. my fear and just like because there's no going back at this point, you know. And I'm just gonna get over my fear and it's time to go, you know. And I remember when I called you when you were in Ohio on the phone, I was like, I, I gotta get out of here, dude. Remember I was supposed to stay yeah, at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. That was the real like I give this story on stage, which gives them the generality, but the specifics under that. Interesting. Which I, bring out I did not. Here. I didn't remember yeah. that at all. That I remember that at all. And I well, slated in every right? single other area. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, seriously, I'm sure it's because our MO at that time was there's no hurdle we can't climb, yeah, and yeah. if we have to climb this one, we climb it. Your what the MO hell, was right? Exception. Any exception but that's it. But I think I was he, like, my, here's my, here was my MO, guys. It's not gonna fucking work out. Shit. My MO was that. Fuck, it's, we're not gonna fucking. And he, he would always be like, dude, I got it. I'm gonna get it done. We would, and we'd, 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 we'd handle it. it. We'd handle it. We'd get whatever it is that we that needed it. to get, and we got I, it. That's the distinction. I didn't have the certainty I have now. Like, I have a totally different certainty mm -hmm. in my life Well, of now course. Of than course. I, than I had then. I didn't have the certainty. He had the certainty to go, I'll get the exception. I'll get the thing handled. We'll hit the goal. And I think it's I because have you have... There's nothing. We weren't holding anything back. It's like, hey, here's why I feel it's deserved, and... What are they gonna say now? If they say no, then who cares? Move on. All right, it wasn't it wasn't gonna change me. Did you know that before I got into management after I practiced six figures? Did you know that I had like a, a near death experience with drugs? Yeah, you told me. I told you, right? Yeah. 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 But we laughed about it, I think. After the fact. Yeah, we laughed after about it. After the fact, yeah. <laughs>
I met Mo, you know, kind of by accident or fate or whatever you want to call it. I believe I ultimately chose it because that was my path. And initially I was supposed to go into work with my dad. And I get back from Thailand, I get a phone call, I'm in New Jersey, and I pick up the phone, I'm like, hey dad. And he's like, I gotta talk to you. I'm like, what? He's like, well, um, I'm going out of business. For me, I was like, ooh, man, I gotta get to work, right? So I, I got, I can't, like I came out of college, I was on the, the tennis team, I was big man on campus, I'm not gonna feel like a peon, so I'm getting to work. And I get this phone call, um, and I walk out of my room and I pick it up, and I see on the caller ID, it says like, Mo I Stafa Kukaka Chamakalaka Do Bada Abdul, right? And I'm like, what, what is that? Like, Mo I, I am the Stafa of two or whatever? So I, so I like pick up the phone and under it, it says NY Life, and so I pick it up and I'm like, hi, and he's like, hey, you wanna come in for an interview? And he starts talking about the job. So I'm like, yeah, I'll come in, I'm so excited. So I come in the next day to this interview and I go up to the 29th floor in this big bank building and I walk off the floor and I see New York Life Insurance and I'm expecting that I'm interviewing for a magazine. So they got like these plush couches and like they got this you know formal assistant over there with New York Life on the wall and she walks in she's like, are you here to see Mo? And I'm like, yeah, I think. She's like, yeah, for the New York Life Insurance interview. I'm like, okay. So I walk in like totally feeling like I'm at the wrong place. But I sit down and the first question out of Mo's mouth, who's my mentor, soon to be mentor, is uh, you know, who, who is Ted McGrath? And three and a half hours later, we finish the interview. And like who Mo was for me in that moment was a possibility. I had zero experience, zero. Mo uh, challenged me to be better. He always, and it was more like, um, Nobody had to like motivate me. There wasn't like a, you didn't have to give me a rah-rah fucking session. It's like, give me the fucking goal, dude. Like set the fucking target and I'm on it, right? Give me the impossible and I'm fucking doing it. That's what it meant to me was somebody who could see possibility and somebody who had faith and had confidence where I didn't have it. I had drive, didn't have faith and confidence and certainly didn't have any fucking faith. I can tell you that much right now. Like on the scale of faith, like if you had a scale of faith of zero to like 100, I would be like a negative 100. Because I didn't believe that there was anything out there ever that was, was conspiring in my favor. That's what uh, Mo's meant to me in my life. And today, present day, if you look at our relationship today, it's really interesting. I think I'm a, a guiding light today. And I think I have a uh, perspective on life that not a lot of people have. And so I was even on the phone with him the other day and it was so, um, fulfilling to be able to have a conversation the other day and be like, hey, like, here's what I'm learning, and here's what I'm doing, and like inspiring him to go into, for him reaching to go, oh, I'm, I'm interested in that. I want to sit down and learn that stuff from you. So I feel like I now am able to give back in a way to a man who's given me so much, like to, to the, the gratitude that I have for Mo, um, you couldn't, uh, the universe couldn't hold it. It's just, it's just not even possible. Like, uh, the guy believed in me when um, everybody else, not everybody else, but most people in my life thought it was crazy to go work for an insurance company. And the cool thing is we've gone full circle. Mo's moving to Los Angeles here in the next 10 days. So, which is amazing, you know, and, I, and it's an amazing thing. After the interview that you just saw we did in San Diego, he called me and said we're moving to Los Angeles. So, um, it's an amazing thing. So now I have an opportunity to give back on a level that, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably give back for the rest of eternity for that man.